Throughout my time traveling around Southeast Asia, I've been scammed my fair share amount of times and it's not always fun. So in this video, I'm gonna share the scams that I've been through personally and how to avoid them. So I'm gonna discuss every Southeast Asian country except Myanmar and East Timor, but all the others, these are the scams I've experienced. So the first country we're gonna discuss is Thailand. So Thailand, the notorious taxi scam. Now there's a few different scams in Thailand regarding the taxis and the first one is the fast meter. I experienced this one in Bangkok and what you've got to do when you're in Thailand and you're on the taxis, you've got to really pay attention to the meter because some of them they may go up a lot quicker than you may think. I had this one and I asked him why is the meter going up so quickly and he began to get a bit nervous and sort of anxious. Yeah, so pay attention to the meter and if it is going up quicker than normal, definitely ditch the taxi before you end up wasting too much money. Now by law, the taxi drivers, they're supposed to use the meters and what you'll find is a lot of the time they won't wanna use the meters so you're obviously gonna get a better deal when they use the meters. That's why they don't wanna use the meters so they make extra money. Now after hours of doing this before when I was in Bangkok, I just got to the point where I just had to accept a taxi where I paid it on a set price we discussed beforehand and to be honest, you might you might pay three dollars extra, five dollars extra, but yeah, if you can, always go for the taxis with the meters. You're going to save the money, and they're going to be billed the correct way. Now, a tip when you're in the taxis, you're going to want to have your route up on your phone in either Google Maps or Apple Maps. Personally, Google Maps is better because you're going to want to make sure that the taxi driver he's going in the right way. He's not taking any extra long routes, so you end up paying more. So yeah, have your route up on your phone. Never get in taxis where they're waiting outside your hotel or popular tourist attractions. Usually these taxi drivers, they're gonna scam you for sure. They're the scum of the taxi drivers. You always wanna get on one when you're out and about along the road, you wanna hail a taxi and that's usually gonna be a better chance of not getting ripped off. They're gonna usually pay by the meter there. So yeah, don't get in taxis that are waiting outside your hotel. A common scam in Bangkok, Thailand, Thailand in general, is the palace is closed scam. So what's gonna happen is you'll be about to enter the Grand Palace, Wat Pho, whatever, Watarun, and what will happen, there'll be a Thai guy out, he'll have his map with tour guides and he'll say, oh no, the temple's closed today, uh, some king meeting or some bullshit. And what will happen is, that they'll try and convince you that the temple's closed and rarely it is closed. Just double check online to see if it is in fact closed, but they just say that because they're gonna be like, oh, instead here's an alternative. We can go to the bloody river cruise and then they're gonna make money off you. So yeah, if they say the temple's closed, don't listen, just do your research beforehand. Now with the tuk-tuk rides in Bangkok, yeah, mainly in Bangkok, what they'll do is they'll stop off at suit tailoring stores, different places where they make commission if you buy things. So it can be very frustrating. It happened to me in Bangkok. I just wanted to go to one of the temples. You ended up stopping off at the suit store, some other place, and I just got fed up. And so yeah, make sure if you are getting a tuk-tuk, they go straight to the destination. None of this messing around. And that's why I find usually taxis are the better option. It won't happen as often. I don't think at all. It happens with taxis, but yeah, when you're getting a tuk-tuk in Bangkok, that's something that is common. So some other scams that happen in like Phuket where the water is, is the jet ski scams where you definitely have to take a video of the condition of your jet ski and motorbike. So what they do is when you return it, they say, oh look, here's a scratch. And if you don't have that proof, if you don't take a video of the condition of your motorbike or jet ski, they can end up taking your passport, they can be charging you ridiculous amounts of money and just outright scamming you. So yeah, you have to be very aware of that. Make sure you get some good video footage of the entire thing and do it in front of them so you've got that proof and they know that you're experienced and you're not to be messed with. So now we move on to the scams I realized in Vietnam and the first one happened to me in, it was Ho Chi Minh City and this is the shoe scam. So I've noticed it's happened to a lot of people as well and what you'll do, you'll be walking and two young blokes, probably 14 years old, they came up to me and what they done, I was like standing still, one of them started talking to me and then what, another one, he started like cleaning my shoes, I don't know, polish or whatever it was, he done this action, I don't know what it was and then about after 30 seconds of him doing, I was like, oh man, I've been scammed in, I just sort of just accepted it and what they done, they ended up selling me some shoe soles as well and I was like, it might have been, I paid like $6 and I was like, oh. And so I ended up copping the L with that one. So yeah, to avoid this, just 
just keep walking just don't stop for anyone who wants to talk to you now another scam which isn't too bad to be honest it did happen to me this one is in Hanoi Vietnam and what happens is there'll be these ladies walking around with big like baskets of bananas and like pineapples and it's a good photo opportunity and what they'll do is they'll get you to hold the thing on your shoulders and it's a cool photo opportunity I've actually enjoy the photo that I've got with that and I ended up paying like I probably paid more than I had to but I ended up getting some fresh bananas no I think it's only fresh pineapple but yeah you might pay some money for it but it's not the worst scam keep in mind if they do approach you for that you're gonna have to end up paying for it so next we'll discuss some Indonesia scams Bali in particular now at this stage in my travel career I've quite experienced so I didn't actually encounter any scams really but there are some scams to be aware of when you're traveling Bali Indonesia and the first one is the taxi scams now there's like a taxi mafia with the bluebirds there's like fake bluebird taxis what I recommend is just use grab it's really cheap and you're always going to get a good safe ride but you do have to be aware grab isn't always used in Ubud and the Kuda area but we managed to get a grabs in Kuda so yeah just be careful with the bluebird taxis when you're in Bali you definitely want to be aware of the currency exchanges you're using now there's lots of dodgy ones if the place looks dodgy just don't use it use official banks and if the deal's too good the exchange rate is too good to be true it is so they do sneaky stuff with their hands and they mess up your money so yeah definitely use legit currency exchanges or preferably go to a bank and do it so the next country is Malaysia and I didn't really at all notice any scams no scams happened to me I was in Kuala Lumpur and it was one of the better countries in terms of scams in Southeast Asia what I did notice is lots of the taxi drivers they were kind of a bit lazy and they didn't they didn't want to take me to where I wanted to go yeah they didn't want to accept my request and other than that Malaysia was one of the better countries in Southeast Asia not really too much scamming going on but obviously use common sense and get yeah, one of the better countries so the next country is Singapore and this is one of my favorite countries and one of the safer countries but I actually have encountered some scams if you'd call them that so what I want to let you know is one of them was inside a club now what happened was one of the sort of dancers at the club pretty much come up to me with a range of shots out in like little test tube things and I was saying do I need to pay for these? Do I need to pay for these? And the person was Chinese and it was very hard to understand what she was saying. So the woman who approached me was Chinese and she was very hard to understand her English. And so she basically came up to me with some shots. It was like maybe 12 or something. And I was communicating. And from what I understood, keep in mind, I was a little bit intoxicated. I thought they were free. She was offering me them. So what happened was we shared the shots, we had like half each, so it might have been, I think it was like 12 in total, so six each. And I was like, oh yeah, all good times, drank them. And then like about three minutes later, she comes to me with, with a bill and this was like 180 Singapore dollars. And I was like, what? And I was there discussing with her for about five minutes, back and forth on Google Translating, discussing, but you drank half of them and I thought this was free, you didn't specify it. And so you yeah, ended up having to pay $180 on the spot for some shots and it wasn't the best but it was a good learning experience so yeah definitely if someone comes to you with drinks don't accept them know that you will need to pay for them nothing's for free and yeah keep that in mind this next one we got done pretty hard as well now what happened was my mate and i we were traveling from the marina bay sands to the night safari and what was happening was there was a taxi queue where you line up and there's taxis that come and what happened was we went in a maxi taxi and what we were thinking was oh it wouldn't really matter they'd just have the meter anyway what difference would it be and then about maybe five ten minutes through the trip we started to realize shit something's not right here we're probably gonna have to pay more for this and the guy the driver did not specify that we would have to pay more for this he definitely should have because there was just two of us we didn't have any baggage or anything at all when he was saying like oh, kick your feet up i was kind of getting the idea that he was trying to make it like a more luxury experience but there was nothing special about it. it was just better for holding your luggage so it ended up costing it was about 120 singapore dollars from the marina bay sands to the night safari and this was a whole lot more because we got a regular taxi on the way back and that was like 20 Singapore dollars. So yeah, never ever get in a maxi taxi unless you are balling or you need that for the luggage because 
They've got good taxis in Singapore. They've got the blue yellow ones that use the meters. So don't use your maxi taxis unless you really need it. The next country we're going to discuss is Cambodia. Now keep in mind with like Thailand, Vietnam, lots of the same scams sort of apply. Taxi drivers not using their meters and stuff, but something specific to Cambodia I noticed was around Angkor Wat. Obviously Angkor Wat's packed with tourists and they're going to want to take advantage of you. So what I encountered was this young kid. He was probably like 12 or something and he was basically acting like he wanted money for this school and they wanted to learn English and he was poor and they didn't have money and he had a whole sob story and they do make you feel guilty for him and you don't have to give him money. Yeah, so when people are begging, just, just avoid them. It's, it sounds harsh, but you don't owe them anything. Now this happened to me when I was in Angkor Wat and I was traveling solo so I had no one to take my pictures for me and I sort of quickly realized having been scammed my fair share of times that this would be a scam but I kind of just at this stage I kind of just went with it and what was happening was a guy was taking pictures for me he started off taking a picture for me like oh here's a picture and then he pretty much gave me a guide through all his best picture spots throughout the temple in Angkor Wat and I did get some good pictures I ended up getting some good ones for Instagram and what happened was at the end of it he didn't even ask for money but at that stage like you would give him money because that's something that you would do and the amount of money I gave him he wasn't quite happy with so yeah just keep in mind if someone wants to take pictures if someone does anything for you they're gonna expect money no one in those countries does anything for free so if you're traveling solo and the guy wants to take pictures accept that you're gonna pay them also in Cambodia you've got your typical beggars children beggars what will happen is the parents will get their kids because they're small and innocent to come up with bracelets and try and sell things just avoid it at all costs. It might seem harsh, but just avoid them. Now in Laos, actually, apart from your typical scams, it wasn't all too bad in Laos, I know. So I kind of found the people of Laos to be a bit more sort of generous and genuine than the people in Cambodia and especially Thailand and stuff. Yeah, obviously use common sense and you're gonna have your typical taxi scams and people trying to sell you stuff. But other than that, Lao wasn't too bad in terms of scams. Next, we've got the Philippines. In my opinion, one of the worst countries up there with Thailand in terms of scams. So what I encountered was in Manila, one of my least favorite cities in the whole of Asia. What I was doing, I was walking around the city. It was at night. In general, I felt unsafe in Manila, but I was walking around and a guy at a hotel, he calls out to me and says, hey, I think I've noticed you before and he comes up to me starts talking to me where are you from all that usual stuff and then he says oh, I'll show you around what are you doing today and I was like oh yeah I need a haircut he's acting very very friendly and at this stage because I've heard people say oh the people of the Philippines are so nice and I think we need to get out of this notion that everyone in Southeast Asia is nice like a lot of them they want your money let's just be real a lot of people want your money they're not as genuine as you think yes there are genuine people but when they see a white person, they see money. So what happened to me was I was walking and I thought, cause, cause like I said, I heard they're so genuine, these people. I thought he was genuinely trying to just help me, show me around the city and I should have known better. But what happened was we went to the shopping center. He showed me this place. He paid for my haircut. He was really friendly. He bought me these ginseng tablets. So we went to like the big mall in, malls are big in Manila. So we went to this big mall, he was showing me around. Then he took me for dinner. We went to this place where there's live entertainment, pizza, beers. Now this was part of his tactics to get me a bit drunk. Luckily I handle alcohol pretty well. And so he was getting me beers, he was paying for it. He paid for the whole thing. And I was like, uh, is this okay? And I was like, maybe he's genuine like maybe there's not too many tourists because there's not too many tourists that go to manila and i'm like i'm playing along with it and then what happens is we go to like some other place and i can't remember exactly i think from there he basically we ended up at a strip club and like oh yeah white guy or young young guy he'd like this and so i end up there and i'm like okay this is kind of weird there's like no one here and what happens is they order this food off this menu and it's overpriced like the pizza is like absolutely ridiculous and it costs like twenty dollars they order chips and I, i'm like actually not even agreeing to this and i'm just like oh shit now i'm kind of in trouble and then basically what happens is you have to end up paying for it and then you go up to the room and then they're like here's the price and it was like 300 australian dollars and i'm like i was i was actually up there arguing but i was like 
Man, I've, I've played myself. Congratulations, you played yourself. I've got to accept it. I don't want to end up getting in a fight, getting into more trouble. So I just paid it and I was like, lesson learned. Yes, yeah, so I ended up paying like the $300 and I was like, fuck, I don't trust any cunt. Yes, yeah, so after that, I was like, shit, I hate Manila even more now. And it just goes to show when people act nice, like there's a good chance they want your money. Like people in Asia, people like to say, oh, they're so nice, but they're not. Yeah, there are a few people that are nice. The thing I've learned from traveling Southeast Asia, if someone comes up to you, if they approach you, it's a scam. If you want something, you go and do it yourself. If you want to get a taxi, you go and get a taxi. If you want to go to a club, you go to a club. If you want food, you go get food, whatever it is. I would recommend skipping Manila in total and just getting out of there and heading to the islands, Boracay, all that. Just to add on that Manila scam where I went to the sh strip club, in total, for what I did pay, like, it wasn't too bad. Like, this guy, he was genuine, but in the end, he ended up being a, a dickhead. But what happened was, I got a free haircut, because he paid for it. We went and got dinner. What I got was, like, pizza, chips, like, a bunch of beer. Like, well, that was obviously part of his tactic to get me a bit, like, a bit loose. So, yeah, lots of beers. And he bought me these ginseng tablets, like, from a pharmacy, straight from a pharmacy. That was, like, their typical self healing bullshit but in total it actually wasn't all too bad like it could have been worse but yeah just wanted to add that another scam in the philippines i actually didn't encounter this but it is pretty rough is they will plant a live bullet in your baggage when you're traveling through the airport so that might be manila airport now i'm glad i didn't encounter this but i've heard about it and that's pretty rough so yeah definitely keep an eye on your baggage at all time don't leave your bags make sure your zippers are locked they're closed sealed and yeah, because that's a pretty, pretty mean one. What's going to happen is you're going to have to pay off one of the border security guys and it's not going to be a good time. It's quite rough, that one, so keep a lookout for that. Okay, so the last country in my Southeast Asian scams expedition is Brunei. Now, Brunei is actually the best country in terms of scams, meaning there were no scams. It didn't get scammed at all, so yeah. So I'm going to rank the countries from worst meaning you get scammed the most to the least scammed country. So the worst country for scams is Thailand, followed by Vietnam, and then the Philippines, and then we had Indonesia, Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, Singapore, and the best country with the least scams was Brunei. Now keep in mind this doesn't include Myanmar. I have a feeling that's kind of like similar to Cambodia, Laos, but yeah, in general, to wrap this up is, from what I've learned in all my times traveling Southeast Asia, if someone approaches you, do not listen to them, just avoid them. If they say, where are you from, just walk, keep walking. Do your research beforehand, have your roots up on your maps. Yeah, and you are gonna get scammed. Like, sometimes there's no avoiding it, sometimes they're very, very good. You need to place some trust in the people, but overall, the people in Southeast Asia, you can't trust them. You need to always be on your guard. The countries you don't really need to be on your guard are Singapore and Brunei and like Malaysia. They're some of the better countries, but yeah, when you're in the other countries, you're gonna have to stay on your guard. That's just the reality of traveling Southeast Asia. And other than that, that's a wrap for this video of the Southeast Asian scams to be aware of, to keep in mind. If you enjoyed this video and gained value from it, I want you to like the video with your chin fat, that's right. <laughs> Get your chin fat, pull it out, and see if you can like the video with your chin fat. I want, I want you to try and do that for me, because, yeah, that'd help out the video. And also subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.